Jackie from Lynx Digital and today we're looking at another episode of OpenCV Tutorials and we're going to look at how we can make our program uh, easy to compare between different frames that we do. So previously we came up with two frames. One is the Kenny image and the second Kenny image with a lower threshold. Right, so now we had this previously, let's run it. Uh, okay, the thresholds are the same, but yeah, so we have two different frames and what we want to do is to just have one frame. So it, it makes it easier to drag it around, easier to compare side by side. So what we will do is we will expound on what we have. So for this, we will be creating maybe a third frame. So we'll be able to compare We just change it, maybe the first one could be 50, second one's 100, and the third one 150. So this is good for us to compare between different uh, thresholdings or when we have different variables, it makes it easy to compare because we can see them all side by side and we don't have to like arrange them by ourselves. So the first thing that we're going to do is we just make it a line and we will do this. So first we want to do, we'll be doing covering two things today. First we'll be scaling the image that we see. So from what we did previously, and if you all follow along, you are not able to resize the frame because it's fixed. So today we're going to look at first how to resize the frame and next how to fit all the frames into one window. Alright, so first let, we'll start with this. So we have a percentage, so we're going to scale it down. We have to give it a percentage so it will scale the width and the height of the frame uh, in proportion. So let's just call this variable percent scale and give it a value of something. So it's a decimal because uh, we assume the full size to be one. So we have the first the width. With frame goes to integer frame dot shape. Um, I'll explain this a little later. Then we will pass this multiplied by the percentage and scale. And then uh, height frame frame dot shape. Okay. Right, so what this does here is that uh, shape, the dot shape of frame will have, uh, it's an array with the first two uh, values that we want. So the first will be height. So we look for the first uh, value in frame dot shape. And then we extract the second value of frame dot shape, which is uh, the width of the frame. So actually just to show it, let us print how it looks like. We comment this out for now and we will print frame. Oops, let's see what we have in this array. Okay, I didn't close the bracket. Let's continue. And what do we have here? Right, so you can see the variables. Uh, so this is, oh, it, because of the while true loop, every time it passes through the loop, it will print frame.shape. So frame.shape has three um, variables in it. First is the, uh, the first is the uh, width, it's the height, sorry. First is the height, followed by the width. And the last is actually the number of uh, val color values. So three means are RGB and one will mean grayscale. So to show you how it's like, let's print gray, gray. Oh, shit. Right, so for the grayscale version, look at it, it's printing frame.shape first 
and then gray frame dot shape. So you can see the tree is not there anymore. It needs two. So similarly, we look at this. And let's take this out again. So frame dot shape the first. Uh, this will be the second uh, number, one. I mean, 1280 and 0 will be 7 Alright, let's close this. Alright, so since we've done this, let's continue with the scaling. So in order to scale, we must have the last one, which is uh, just to put them into a linear dimension. So it's just the dimensions of uh, the new frame, which is width and height. Width, frame, and height, frame. So then we will use uh, open CD's function, which is cd2 dot. So we have to put it scale first. So this top scale frame is the new logo. Uh, then we will do cd2 dot new size. I see this is uh, another function is inbuilt. So the variables we have to pass into this function will be uh, the, the frame. So we will pass in, for example, the frame. Then we'll pass in the new dimension. Then uh, with this last one for inter. Dimension. So, and then we put this. We can say that. Let's comment this out. I should off and run the script. So you can see that the frame is scaled down fifty percent. Let's just take a look at the original frame. So let's do this. But we print gray frame. And let's go. So this is the original size. And this is 50% smaller. Just by comparing. So it's 50% smaller. And yeah. You notice the frame, the razor frame is smaller. Actually, it's really a little faster. I think it's around the same speed. So let's close this. And so we can play around with the numbers. The percentage scale could be 0.3, and then we'll get a smaller frame. So let's comment this out first, and we'll notice that it actually moves faster. So it's more in real time. If you compare it with the little um, bubble over here, it's kind of like the speed. But if I put this and I do a new skill, it's a little slower. It takes a little, there's a bit of lag to it. And uh, when it comes to image processing for uh, real-time footage, you know, looking at road conditions or just uh, getting real-time uh, remote images of what the cameras is, that could be uh, quite a uh, trouble in a sense. So we'll try to scale it down. I think it's also to find a, a sweet balance between uh, the scale, the percentage scale, and also um, the quality of detection as we move on and look at uh, how uh, scaling down the image will compromise certain uh, accuracy in terms of uh, the processing of the images that we have to the different filters because definitely a smaller image will mean that uh, you lose some detail and losing detail could lead to uh, inaccurate or uh, undetected objects. We'll take a look at that later, but definitely we can scale it up. So we just put a number that's bigger than one. It will scale it accordingly. 
really a big huge this time. Yeah, it, it's really huge. It's not worth this for now. And this is roughly get an idea of how this percentage still works. So we shift it back down to 0.5 and we'll move on to look at how we can multiple frames. So let me just comment this out first. Alright, so now we'll look at how to merge frames together. So we'll do merge frame equals to dot. So this is concatenation, which means that you vertically you concatenate two frames together, stack them vertically. So uh, it will take in the argument of an array. So the array will contain two frames from above. So we can just pick two. We'll pick Kenny frame. And Kenny frame two. So you can either pass in uh, an array or a tuple. So a tuple means that it's just uh, an immutable array which is round brackets. But let's just do square brackets on this. Merge frame. So we'll just print out merge frame. And let's see how it goes. So we have two frames stacked on top of each other. Okay, it's, it's too big to be able to see it clearly. So let's uh, activate the skill. Right, so we'll take merge frame, put it on top. Because uh, Python runs sequentially, so it will merge the frames first and then scale it down by 50%. So we need the shape of the merge frame. This will be different from the actual frame because it's double the height. So merge frame, we do merge frame, and then instead of grey frame, we put merge frame. And uh, if successful, so we'll print out the frame. So let's see how it goes. It should be 50% smaller now. Okay. Oh, right. We have to print scale frame instead. Show scale frame. And yes, we have our skill frame. Skill down is fifty percent, right? So that's for um, D concat. So it will vertically concatenate two frames. We also can look at H concat. So H will mean that it is uh, horizontally concatenated. This, yeah. So that's that, and then. Lastly, we can look at how we can uh, stack four frames together. So uh, four frames it just means a vertical concatenation and two horizontal concatenations or vice versa. So how we can do this is uh, start with this. But uh, on the inside, we must have uh, first one which is which compact. So we will do uh, the C2 dot we found cat followed by a comma. So it becomes a rocky array. So it's um, just okay. so it's a two by two matrix inside. Let's go. That's where you can see the four frames now. So let me just close this and actually we can just play around and then since we have uh, about four frames available, let's just set them all in and let's clean it out. Right, so we can see all the different frames we have here. So uh, I think quite intuitively you can see that uh, it will correspond to the uh, location of it, so the top left top left frame will be Kenny frame uh, on and on the right top frame will be Kenny frame three the bottom right frame will be grayscale frame Let's see over here so then again you can see it's um, pretty laggy so what we can do is to just reduce the percentage scale and you'll get 
nice skill sandwiches in real time ish. Yep. So that's how you do it, and I think it's really helpful for comparison. So as you can see from the different uh, candy frames, you can see how the different threshold is. Because uh, as we recall from the previous tutorial, this is the minimum threshold, this is the maximum threshold. You can see how the difference in the trash holding will affect the pump detection we have. Right? So if you look at a different, like a different design or something, if you look at the phone, the way it detects will be different. So it depends on how much detail we want in the final detection. So as we look at main lines in the future or uh, different objects that we have, it will vary in terms of trash holding that we would need and require. Right, so that's the end for this uh, tutorial. Uh, next, we'll be looking more at different filters we have available. And this will come in really handy when we look at different filters and evaluate which one is the most efficient or can give us the result we want best. So we can compare it over four frames, eight frames, even more. We can stack um, vertically or horizontally using H and concat. Right. Right, so that's about it for now. And hope you have fun. All the links of the code will be in the description below. And see you next time.